Well, hello everyone. I hope you're doing well today. I wanted to make this video because over the past day or so, I came across many news stories concerning the neurological health of 2024 independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. The news articles state that in 2010, Kennedy, who is now 70 years old, experienced memory loss and mental fog. This was reported by him in a deposition during a divorce proceeding in 2012. He reportedly consulted with neurologists after being concerned about his memory and after reviewing his brain scans, he was told by the neurologist that his memory problems could be related to evidence of a parasite in his brain. According to Kennedy, his problems may have been caused by a worm that got into my brain and ate a portion of it and then died. A spokesperson for Kennedy's campaign said that he, around that time, had traveled extensively in Africa, South America, and Asia as a part of his work as an environmental advocate, and she said that he contracted the parasite during one of those trips. His spokesperson also stated that the issue was resolved more than 10 years ago, and he is currently in robust physical and mental health. So around the same time, Kennedy allegedly also suffered from mercury poisoning, which can lead to neurological issues such as memory problems, vision loss, weakness, problems with coordination and movement, as well as hearing and speech difficulties. Kennedy claimed that he has since recovered from the memory loss and the brain fogginess attributed to mercury toxicity in the parasite and that the parasite did not require treatment. Due to these medical issues that occurred over a decade ago, there have been some implications by these news outlets that Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s past may influence his cognitive abilities and consequently his suitability for political office if he were to win the presidential election. So in this video, I'm going to evaluate the accuracy of these implications by examining each claim and assessing the evidence supporting its impact on his cognition or mental capacity. It's important to note that I am not his physician. I am merely providing an analysis based on publicly available information and my own expertise in medicine to facilitate an educational and informed discussion on this topic. This video is intended for educational purposes only, and it's not intended to be political. My goal is to address any misconceptions or exaggerated assumptions that may be propagated by mainstream media outlets in order to further specific political agendas. So let's start with the parasite in his brain. Although the reports don't state specifically what parasite RFK Jr. was infected with, the descriptions of the parasite seem consistent with a type of parasite called tinea solium. Now this is known as the pork tapeworm. Tinea solium causes a parasitic infection known as sister sarcosis. Humans can get infected with it, typically in developing countries, by eating food or drinking water contaminated by human feces containing tinea solium eggs. The eggs will hatch and the larvae will travel and form cystic lesions known as cystocerci in different organs of the body, most commonly in subcutaneous tissue, the eyes, and the brain. When the larva infect the brain, this is known as neurocystocercosis. So the cystocerci will embed themselves in the brain tissue, evade the immune system for a period of time, but then once the immune system recognizes them, it will form an attack on them, which will cause them to die. Contrary to some claims, the parasite does not actually consume brain tissue. It merely forms cysts within it and then resides within the brain tissue. After the cystocerci die, they may resolve or disappear, or they may calcify into something called a granuloma. In someone with a previous infection, we may see a single calcified cyst or multiple, depending on how many cysts got into the brain. On imaging, either CT or MRI, you can often see uh, these cysts, and sometimes you can see what's called a scolex within the cyst. The scolex is a small nodule projecting into the cyst, which represents the head of the tapeworm. If you see this scolex, it's diagnostic of neurocystocercosis. In general, neurocystocercosis does not cause memory problems. The most common issue we see with this disease is actually seizures because of the irritation and the inflammation of the brain tissue surrounding the cysts. This irritation can cause abnormal electrical activity in that brain tissue surrounding the cyst, which is what a seizure is. It's abnormal electrical activity in neurons. Neurocystocercosis is actually the most common parasitic infection of the brain 
in the world. And it's the most common cause of seizures in young adults in many countries where this parasite, Tinea solium, is endemic. It's most common in developing countries such as Latin America, Southeast Asia, and some parts of Africa. It's rare to contract it though in developed countries such as the US. It doesn't appear that RFK Jr. suffered from seizures according to what I have read. In addition to seizures, other clinical manifestations of neurocystic cirrhosis depend on where in the brain the cystocerci are located. We can see headaches. They can be common in some people with neurocystic cirrhosis. Some less common neurological symptoms include focal neurological signs, such as focal weakness or numbness, altered vision, meningitis. If the cysts embed within the flow tracts of the cerebral spinal fluid in the brain and the spinal tract, you can actually get a buildup of cerebral spinal fluid in the brain, which will cause elevated pressure within the brain. This is called elevated intracranial pressure. Symptoms of elevated intracranial pressure include headaches, nausea, vomiting, and confusion. Ultimately, it seems improbable that any memory issues that RFK Jr. had were actually attributable to this parasitic infection if it were caused by neurocystic cirrhosis. Let's delve into the mercury toxicity claims surrounding RFK Jr. Around the same time that he reported memory problems in 2010, he also mentioned suffering from mercury toxicity likely due to excessive consumption of tuna and perch, which he believed to have contributed to his memory issues. Mercury toxicity can manifest with various neurological symptoms, including memory problems. It can also be associated with attention problems, problems with fine motor skills. People with mercury toxicity can also experience abdominal pain and respiratory issues. Certain types of fish, particularly predatory saltwater varieties like swordfish, shark, and tuna, are known to have elevated mercury levels and they should be consumed cautiously, ideally no more than once a week. RFK Jr.'s frequent consumption of tuna suggests that mercury toxicity could have explained his reported memory problems and brain fog, but was his tuna intake actually sufficient to cause memory loss? Let's explore this further. Normal blood mercury levels are typically below 5 micrograms per liter, with levels above 50 micrograms per liter generally thought to be the threshold for causing toxicity symptoms. Individuals who consume high amounts of fish may have blood levels at or about 20 micrograms per liter. We don't know exactly how much tuna RFK Jr. consumed. It's unclear whether his mercury levels reached the threshold associated with toxicity symptoms or if it remained within that hazy range typical for frequent fish consumers. Without more information, we simply cannot make any assumptions about his situation. Assuming his complaints about his memory were related to mercury toxicity, is there any evidence that he's experiencing any memory problems now? In my opinion, based on the video footage that I've seen of him talking, he doesn't seem to have any issues with memory or any evidence of cognitive impairment. So what are my final conclusions? Based on what I've seen of video footage of him, RFK Jr. does not seem to be suffering from any lingering effects of this parasitic infection or mercury toxicity. Like I mentioned before, it's unlikely that this infection contributed to even to his past memory issues unless it had affected a region of his brain specifically involved in memory formation, such as his hippocampus. This is a region of the brain that is very important in memory formation. But since he doesn't seem to be exhibiting any memory problems now, as far as we know, this scenario seems unlikely. Also, if the infection had embedded itself into the hippocampus, it would have likely led to other long-term implications like seizures because the hippocampus is a very sensitive region of the brain and people with damage to the hippocampus are often at a high risk of developing seizures. He does not seem to be having any seizures, no episodes of confusion, no, uh, no generalized shaking episodes in public or on video footage. I have not seen any formal cognitive testing reports on him, but Based on what I've seen, he does not seem to display any cognitive deficits. He doesn't have any speech abnormalities, no difficulty in finding words or slurred speech. He does have a tremor in his voice, 
but this is due to something called spasmodic dysphonia. This is unrelated to the parasitic infection or the mercury toxicity. Spasmodic dysphonia is a type of dystonia, which is a neurological disorder characterized by involuntary muscle contractions. In spasmodic dysphonia, there are involuntary contractions of the voice box muscles or the laryngeal muscles, which results in a shaky or a strained sounding voice. But it's important to note that spasmodic dysphonia doesn't cause any cognitive issues or problems with memory. I also don't see any evidence of other cognitive issues such as something called confabulation. Confabulation is where an individual confidently recounts events that never occurred. Confabulation can occur in people with dementia or in people with a disease called Wernicke encephalopathy. Wernicke encephalopathy is typically caused by a deficiency of a type of B vitamin called thiamine. We see this type of deficiency and subsequent Wernicke encephalopathy in people who are nutritionally depleted, such as alcoholics or those who have undergone gastric bypass surgery or who are vegan. I also see no coordination problems or problems with walking or falling in the video footage that I've seen of RFK Jr. Overall, he seems to be in robust physical and cognitive health for his age. In my opinion, it's very unlikely that he's currently experiencing any neurological consequences from his past infection or mercury toxicity. He seems very articulate, well-spoken, sharp, and he demonstrates the ability to adeptly respond to pretty challenging questions in a very intelligent, professional, and respectful manner. I hope you found this video helpful and educational, and if you want more videos like this, please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.